Next, we look at an important aspect of a complex number. The kind of the kind of aspect that changes a complex number into a real number. How is that? That's what we are going to study under conjugate of a complex number. What is the conjugate of a complex number? If I have a complex number of the form a plus ib, the conjugate of this complex number is a minus ib, so that when I multiply the two complex numbers, I get a square minus b square i square, and i square being minus 1, I just simply get a square plus b square, and so the complex number does not stay a complex number anymore. It's purely real. Okay, so for a complex number z is equal to x plus iy, its conjugate is defined as z bar, and that is equal to x minus iy. The conjugate of a complex number is the image of the complex number on the real axis, right? So as you can see here, I have an argon plane and the complex number z is marked over there and its conjugate is also marked over there. So therefore, what do I get? Magnitude of the two are same. The magnitude of z, the modulus of z is the distance from O to that point. The magnitude of uh, z bar, the modulus of z bar is also same, right? Only that the arguments are different. Why? Of course, because the complex number is different. So something has to be different, right? So therefore, magnitude has to be same because they, are, they represent the same distance from the origin. But the angles joining the origin will be different. So the angle joining the origin for the conjugate of a complex number will be minus of that. So if theta is the argument of the complex number z, then minus of theta will be the argument of the complex number z bar, that is its conjugate. Properties of conjugate are some simple properties which are easy to prove. The conjugate of the conjugate of a complex number is the complex number z itself. If z and z bar are both equal to each other, that is possible only when the imaginary part is zero, that is when z is purely real. And when z is equal to z bar, then each of these is equal to z into real part of z. And z minus z bar is equal to i into the imaginary part of z. And z plus z bar, if it is equal to zero, then it means that z is purely imaginary, right? Okay, next, if z, z bar is equal to the real part of z squared plus the imaginary part of z squared, then the sum of the two complex numbers z1 plus z2, the conjugate of that is equal to conjugate of z1 plus conjugate of z2. z1 minus z2 conjugate is equal to z1 conjugate minus z2 conjugate. Z1 z2 bar is equal to z1 bar times z2 bar. And similarly, z1 by z2 bar is equal to z1 bar by z2 bar only as only on the condition that z2 is not equal to 0. Okay, let's find the conjugate of the complex number given in this question. 1 by 1 minus i. So therefore, first, in order to even begin putting it in the finding the conjugate of this, we need to put it in the form a plus ib, which is which it is not at present. So what will I multiply it by? The conjugate of the denominator. So I get 1 plus i divided by 1 minus i times 1 plus i. So therefore, this is equal to 1 plus i by 1 minus i square. And so this is equal to 1 plus i divided by 1 minus minus 1 because i square is equal to minus 1. And so z is equal to 1 plus i divided by 2. So this is equal to 1 half plus i divided by 2. 
So z is equal to one half plus i divided by two. Is this the end of the problem? No, we have to find the conjugate of this complex number. So the conjugate of this complex number, z bar would be equal to one by two minus i by two. Is that what is given in the options? One minus i by two? Well, no. All of those options are given in terms of i plus one or i minus one in the denominator. So we can write this as one minus i divided by one minus minus one. So this is equal to one minus i divided by one minus i square. So therefore, this is equal to one minus i divided by one minus i times one plus i. So therefore, this is equal to one divided by one plus i. So z bar is equal to one divided by one plus i, option D. And so option D is the correct answer to this question.